Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is John Isma, and uh, I work in the reputation and brand management program here at the Fanshawe campus in London, Ontario. And uh, I'm going to be the host for today's session. And uh, just before we get going here, um, I do have a couple of uh, housekeeping notes to go through. And uh, and Gord, if you can can jump us ahead there, and I'm also going to introduce Gord, who's with with me today in just a moment. Um, so uh, just a couple of notes here, um, audience members, if uh, you don't mind, please have your uh, webcams and mics turned off throughout this session. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, there is a, a tab, a questions tab here, and uh, all you have to do is type in your question, hit the question mark, and uh, we're going to have a Q&A session after uh, Gord's done with the slideshow, and you'll have a chance to ask him any questions that you want about this program. Um, again, uh, if, uh, if you have any other questions that pop up after the session, um, you can email myfuture at fanshawc.ca, and uh, you can also uh, book an uh, appointment with one of our recruiters here at the college, and uh, they're going to be able to answer a lot of your questions that you have um, about coming to college and about getting started. Um, and uh, if you have any questions for Gord, uh, they can certainly uh, connect uh, your questions back to, back to him after the session. Um, if you experience any difficulties watching this, uh, you may just have a couple of extra programs or apps running uh, on your computer. That might be what's slowing you down. So um, right now is a good time to take a minute to just shut that stuff down. If you have any extra windows open, if you're if you're experiencing any drag here or um, any any slowness with the uh, GoToWebinar app, um, you can take a quick sec now just to um, to close up some windows. Uh, now, so. Uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Gord Silverthorne, and uh, he is here today uh, from coming from St. Thomas uh, for the Power Engineering Techniques Fourth Class Program. And uh, Gord's, uh, Gord uh, offers this program at the St. Thomas Elgin campus, and uh, he's here to uh, to uh, run through some highlights of the program with you, um, Gord. So so thanks uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this. Um, I'm going to let you take over here in a sec. I'll be back for uh, for Q&A. Um, again, uh, for people who have questions, um, please pop those into the questions app, and uh, we'll keep tabs of those and uh, have a Q&A after this. So, so Gord, it's all yours. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks very much, John. I appreciate that. Welcome, everyone. And uh, this, I might, as I said, or as John has said, my name is Gord Silverthorne. I am the uh, professor of power engineering at Fanshawe College. And our, our program, as he mentioned, is it's, it's in the St. Thomas campus. Um, we are a fourth class program, and we'll talk a little bit about the details on the progression of your career down the road. However, I just want to touch base with you and let you know that we are an Ontario certified program. This means that our program is a one year in duration. So we begin in September, you're done about the mid part of April, and then there's a work placement after that. We are fully accredited with the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. And that's a big thing for us because we're in line with all the other colleges in Ontario in that we meet a strict guideline with the, with the regulation or with the regulate, regulatory body, the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. And these are the folks that regulate and look after our licenses. And I'll speak a little bit more about them later on in the show. Um, we offer a standardized curriculum and it is recognized nationwide. What's really nice about that is that you're going to be able to take your license when you achieve your license after graduating from Fanshawe College and writing your C of Q exams at the TSSA, you can take your license anywhere in Canada. So you're not just stuck to being have to work in this province or a different province, you can work anywhere in Canada. We also offer student placement for hands-on practical experience, and I'm going to discuss a little bit more about that as we get further on into the program. So a lot of times you, or you may be asking yourself, well, what is power engineering? It's, a, it's an exciting program that offers, or that starts students on a path of continuous learning, rewarding experience, 
above average income, that's an important one, an opportunity for a career in various industries throughout Ontario and Canada. What's really great about this program is that there is a path for improvement. There's a continuous learning path, and I'm going to discuss more about that as well. So as I mentioned, what is a power engineer? Well, power engineering deals with the safe management, operation and maintenance of boilers, steam turbines, air and gas compression. We work in refrigeration plants and associated mechanical and electrical systems in power generation facilities. I'll be de just detailing each one of those as we go through the program tonight. As mentioned before, our regulatory body, our engineering falls under the jurisdiction of the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. TSSA.org is your website if you'd like to check those out sometime. They are the ones that govern our licenses. We are a profession, so we're not classified as a skilled trade per se. Even though we learn a lot of things like skilled trades, we are classed as a profession. So like police officers and nurses, our engineers are also falling under that professional umbrella. Specifically, power plant operation falls under the Technical Standards and Safety Act 2000 and its Related Operating Engineers Regulation 21901. As a student at Fanshawe College in their fourth class program, you will become intimately familiar with these laws that govern our licenses. And because there are laws and statutes that govern these licenses, this is what makes us a profession. So as mentioned earlier, we are accredited, fully accredited with the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. This means we meet provincial and national standards for all curriculums and labs. So we have to make sure that we meet this standard each and every year. We are audited to ensure that we meet compliance. We provide students at the fourth class level a steam time reduction of nine months from the required 12 months. So as a fourth class power engineer, you are required to achieve 12 months practical hands-on steam time. We call this steam time. And this is time spent in an actual operating powerhouse facility. By taking our program, because we're fully accredited, we knock nine months right off the top. You must graduate from the program in order to achieve that. Now, once you're done the program, you're going to need that three months to make up the full year. And we're gonna talk about that closer to the end of the program. So let me talk to you a little bit about the curriculum and some of the things that you'll be learning as you go through this as a fourth class power engineer. This is an introductory level. And in this semester, we call this the first semester 4A. 4A is aligning with the first exam that you will take at the TSSA level. Our courses include applied sciences. We look at plant safety and administration, material and welding. We're gonna be talking about electrical instrumentation and controls. We're gonna be discussing high pressure boilers and their designs. We'll also be looking at the types of plants. So your first semester, is broken down into those six subjects. The second semester begins in January, so the first one runs from September to the end of December. The second semester is, is designated as 4B, and again, this aligns with your licensing through the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. And what we're doing here is we're preparing you from each semester for those licensing examinations. We're going to be, be discussing four topics in this second semester, mainly lubrication, pumps, and compressors. We'll be talking about boiler operation and maintenance. We'll be discussing prime movers and engines, and we'll also be looking at refrigeration and air conditioning. Each and every one of these topics specifically relates to what you'll need to know to become a power engineer at the fourth class level. So I'm going to break down the curriculum a little bit for you. In the first semester, as I mentioned, it begins in September and it runs till the end of December. And it's designated 4A. In the applied sciences, we'll be looking at mechanics and dynamics. We'll be looking at chemistry and thermodynamics. It's a very big part of what we do. It forms the basis of power engineering. Math, physics, and thermodynamics are the basis and the building blocks for what we do as power engineers and the equipment that we operate. You'll also learn how to weld. You'll be looking at the material needed to 
and needed to perform a proper welding techniques, you'll also be looking at piping and valves. As mentioned before, we're going to be discussing high pressure boilers and their boiler systems, the designs as well, and the history of boilers. We'll also be looking at the types of plants that are out there today and the types of plants that you would be working in once you've completed your program and you've successfully passed your TSSA exams. A big part of what we do falls under plant safety and administration. And safety is a very big thing that we do today with regard to our power plants. We're looking at jurisdictional legislation, codes and standards for power engineers. We'll be discussing power plant heating and plant safety. And we have an emphasis on the environment. We'll also be looking at the electricity, instrumentation and controls. So you'll have an opportunity to learn some basic electrical skills. Along with that, there are some plant communication forms out the last part of that, that particular course. As we move into the second semester, beginning in January, you're looking at four separate courses, beginning with lubrication, pumps and compressors. We'll be understanding lubrication and bearings. You're going to be operating a lot of heavy equipment, a lot of machinery, and we need to understand the basis, basics for what makes these things run and how to maintain them. Looking at pumps and compressors, along with boiler safety devices, we'll be discussing in great detail boiler operation and maintenance. This makes you a qualified, competent power engineer. Along with boiler plant operations, you'll be looking at heating plant maintenance and water treatment. Water treatment is a very, very big part of what we do as power engineers. We'll be looking at prime movers and engines, things like internal combustion engines, steam turbines, etc., and auxiliary building systems, things like lighting and basically uh, building operations. And some of our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning will come back over into the refrigeration and air conditioning side of things. So you'll look at heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and cooling systems as well. So that's a breakdown on the classroom stuff that you'll be learning with your textbooks and um, online, of course, because of COVID these days. Let's take a look now at some of the lab work that you're going to be doing. Now, this is going to be face-to-face. -face. This, These college labs have been set up for you to understand what it means to be a power engineer in the field. We have a boiler simulation system set up at the college where you can actually learn from a Delta V system. It's cutting edge and it's the one that a lot of plants are going to now. Western University and London Health Sciences Centre in London are using the Delta V system and we have simulations set up where you can actually operate a boiler from a control room setting. You'll be learning some electrical skills, welding skills. We're going to be teaching you how to weld. We'll be teaching you how to solder copper. You'll learn pipe fitting skills. You'll be tearing apart compressors and pumps and reassembling them. You're going to be understanding pneumatic controls. And we'll also talk about some dead weight testing. Each and every one of these labs is designed for you to be able to give that hands on practical experience when you find that job. We also have an, a, a unique situation, and I'm going to talk in detail about that as well. I'm going to touch on Western University Labs. Fanshawe College has a host plant. Because we don't have our own boiler operation, we have signed an agreement with Western University to use their powerhouse facility. So in the second semester, one day a week for four hours a day, you will be going to Western University and working in a certified first-class power plant environment. And while you're on site there, you'll be learning water treatment, piping and instrumentation diagrams or PNIDs. You're gonna be learning standard operating procedures. And we're going to teach you boiler auxiliaries. That's one of my favorite. That's where you get to tear things apart, find out how they work, put them all back together. And then we take you out in the field and we show you exactly what they look like in a practical, in a practical setting. As mentioned, we are proud to have partnered with Western University. So as I said, one day per week in the second semester, you will be going to Western University's powerhouse. You will have a, uh, an instructor on site from Fanshawe College at all times. We're going to provide you with hands-on training by licensed power engineers. Now, as I mentioned, this is a first-class powerhouse, one of the best in southwestern Ontario. We're also going to provide you with on-site health and safety training to make sure that you're safe during your time at Western University. We're going to have a monthly review of your learning outcomes to ensure that you're still on track. And there's key student deliverables to achieve maximum success 
And those are the labs that I've talked about previously. Here's a picture of, of the outside of the Western University power plant, first thing in the morning in the middle of January. And this is where you'll be going, right downtown London. So sometimes you might ask yourself, well, where can I get a job? Where am I going to get a job as a power engineer? And I'm going to talk to you about some of the places with higher power engineers. Where are we? We're actually one of the best kept secrets, in my opinion. One of the best places you can work as a power engineer is in a power generation facility, be it nuclear facility, such as the Bruce Nuclear, or Ontario, Ontario Power Generation. They all hire nuclear operators, and those people are power engineers. Same for your hydroelectric systems, like in Niagara Falls. So places that are employing power engineers are also at the hydroelectric power generation, generation station. Pulp and paper mills. There's a huge demand currently for power engineers at pulp and paper mills. And these are the remote locations. If this is up your alley, this is a, best, this is a really good uh, place to find a job. Food processing is becoming more and more uh, abundant in southwestern Ontario, especially where we're taking things like corn and we're transferring the, the corn and we're grinding it all down and we're making ethanol. And power engineers are in charge of energy centers to make sure that that process runs smoothly. We're also employed in hospitals, London Health Sciences Center and uh, University Hospital in London all hire power engineers. Hospitals throughout Ontario hire power engineers. Oftentimes we're called billing operators. We'll work in the powerhouse or we'll work in the facility to maintain and keep that building running and operational. We keep the lights on at night, we keep the heat on in the middle of the winter and we keep the cooling on in the middle of the summer. Oil sands, you've heard of the oil sands out west? Well, they're a huge employer of power engineers. And because you have a standardized license, you can go anywhere in Canada. And you may think, well, I can go out and work in the oil sands, something I've always wanted to do. We also work in the automotive sector. The automotive sector is a very big employer of power engineers. And it's, they're vital to maintaining and keeping the operations of that plant up and running with compressed air. So another question you might have is, what will you be doing? Well, what does a power engineer actually do while they're on site? Well, you're going to be working on boilers. So making steam is one of the biggest things that we do as power engineers. We use steam for heating and steam for process. And these, in front of you, these are packaged IR2 boilers. You'll be working on the boiler rooms and boilers very similar to the ones you see here. We're also working on air compressors. Air compressors we use for control air, for controlling our processes. And you'll be intimately familiar from the program that you take at Fanshawe College on how to operate these types of air compressors. As mentioned before, refrigeration is also part of your curriculum in the first or the second semester rather. And you'll be looking at this sort of thing in things like ice skating arenas, uh, food processing, that sort of thing. You'll be working in ammonia plants, uh, brine tank or brine systems as well. So refrigeration plays a big part of what we do. We work on cooling towers. Cooling towers are a large part of what we do as well. There's a large industrial cooling tower that transfers the heat from our processes and maintains the process at ideal efficiencies. As mentioned before, you're looking at building automation systems. So this is a very typical control room for someone actually controlling their processes throughout the plant. As mentioned before, Henshaw College at the St. Thomas campus has the Delta V system. It's very, very up and coming. So just want to switch gears here a little bit and talk to you about some placement partners. As I mentioned before, you're still going to need that three month steam time on the job once you've completed the program at Henshaw College in order to become fully licensed with the TSSA and have a license on the board that keeps you um, or it gains you that employment. As mentioned, we have some placement partners here. We've, we've got Ingredient Canada of London, Lepac Breweries in London, London District Energy, London Health Sciences Centre, Bondewell Foods in Strathroy, Bondewell Foods in Ingersoll, and the IGPC Ethanol Plant in Elmer have all agreed to come on board and provide some placements for students in this uh, final portion of your program.
Now, again, I, I asterisk here pending availability. Oftentimes what we found is that these plants will take um, more than one student. Sometimes because of their, their constraints, they can only take one student. Well, what I want to mention is that the responsibility for finding that placement is the students. However, at Fanshawe College, we work with you to help you find that placement. If none of these placements seem that they fit work or work for you, we work with you to find placements throughout Ontario and even out of province as well. Some of the things to prepare you for that work placement, so things that are going to get you that three months on the job training, we're going to help you with your resume writing. We're going to bring someone in and she's going to talk to you or he's going to talk to you about writing your resume and having a really good resume. We'll talk to you about job search approaches, job interview techniques, a co-op policy and procedure review, just to make sure that you're fully aware and fully compliant once you get to that work placement. And of course, we'll talk about health and safety in the workplace so that you're ready to go. I should also mention that the power engineers in Ontario and throughout Canada are affiliated with the Institute of Power Engineers. It's a professional organization made up of power engineers and people working in related fields. We have Ontario branches in all of these cities that you see on the, on the website. WWNIPE.ca is our national branch. This is the place where engineers like to get together and talk about the things that are going on in our industry. It's also a place where we get to to network with those that are out there, finding out about jobs that are out in the field. And finally, we like to say we empower your future with power engineering. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming out today. I hope you've enjoyed the slideshow. I just got one last thing there. Again, this program is located at the St. Thomas Elgin Regional Campus, 120 Bill Martin Parkway in St. Thomas, Ontario. Thank you for your time and let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to hand this back over to John now. That's great. Thanks so much, Gord, for all that, uh, that great information about your program. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Um, we do have some time to, uh, to run through a few questions, do a quick Q&A, just a little over five minutes. Um, and uh, I do have a few questions for you here, Gord. Okay. Um, so uh, the first question is, uh, what, tech, uh, what textbooks will be needed for this program? So what we use um, is, a, is a book system called Pan Global. And this Pan Global system are set up in modules that correspond with the topics and the courses that you're taking throughout. Pan Global is a company that's located out in Edmonton, Alberta. And we purchased their books exclusively. Um, what these do, these prepare you, these are aligned with the uh, TSSA, the Standardization of Power Engineering's Examination Committee, or SOPEAC, and the content in those also allows you uh, knowledge exercises, um, and we set you up online with those as well. So your textbooks not only come with a paper copy, but you can also, with that paper copy comes an online copy as well, and we set you up with quizzes, and, it's, and that sort of thing that helps form part of your grades. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we, do, uh, we do have another question here. Um, how would a student uh, t who takes this program progress through their career? Oh, that's a very good question. Thanks, John. Uh, so this is a four class power engineering program, and this is the basis of where we start with power engineering. We start out at the fourth class level and we progress from the fourth to the third, to the second, to the first, the first class being the top of our field. So as a fourth class power engineer in this program, you're going to need 12 months steam time. And we're going to knock nine months off as mentioned before in the previous slide. You're still gonna need that three months. So you need 12 months altogether. When you graduate the program, you're going to have an Ontario certificate. You're still required in order to become licensed to write your exams through the TSSA. There are two exams for the fourth class, that's 4A and 4B. Once you become licensed as a fourth class, you can now have the opportunity to challenge the third class license. You're required to have 12 months steam time for your third, and you'll take four exams at the third 
class level with the TSSA. Uh, the second class level, you require to have 18 months steam time. That's 18 months of actual work in a certified registered power plant. And you'll write six exams at the second class level. At the first class level, you're required to have 30 months steam time. Now, those are in a first class plant. So the steam time is required for every class in that particular class of plant or greater. You'll write seven exams at the first class level. Again, that's 30 months steam time. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we still have a couple more minutes here. Uh, another question that's come in, um, where, where do I write my C of Q exams and maybe maybe you would, would clarify what C of Q is for anyone who doesn't know? Sure. Sure, so that's your certificate of qualification. And your, so your C of Q or certificate of qualification exams are written in testing centers, the Ministry of Training uh, for Colleges and Universities, the MTCU centers throughout the province. And the fee is $75, so you'll set up a time, you'll register, there's an application process, and you'll spend your $75 to get that license written. There is a 65% there is a pass rate which you must achieve in order to pass that license. So throughout the province, there are different testing centers. Okay, fantastic, thank you. You're welcome. Um, another question here for you, Gord. Um, what would be the passing grade for a TSSA exam? Yeah, so even though you need 50% to pass the Fanshawe College program, it's a 65% passing grade when you write your TSSA exams. Fanshawe College does not administer those TSSA exams. They must be taken through the MTCU testing sites and an application made to the TSSA, the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. Each exam requires a 65% passing grade. If you don't achieve 65%, you must wait 60 days in order to rewrite that exam. Okay, great stuff. Uh, yeah, we do have time for uh, one more question here. Um, who are the instructors? Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the faces at your program down there in St. Thomas? Yeah, so um, um, you'll, you're going to see me a lot. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm probably the main instructor for the course. I teach just about everything on the course except for the welding side of things. We have a fellow named Dave Hayblom. Who teaches the welding side of things and Dave's uh, a certified welder does a great job uh, this hands-on with Dave he's going to also take you through the curriculum on, on units a six and seven out of the pan global books as well and for the electrical side of things you're going to see a fellow a technician at us uh, at the St. Thomas campus named Dan Gallo Dan Gallo has been with the college for, for a fair number of years he's going to teach you the hands-on electrical side of things so there's uh, basically the three of us when we get to Western University, we get to engage with the folks out there, the, all the licensed power engineers that will help you learn what it means to be a power engineer on site. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Uh, well, thanks for answering those questions. Thanks for all that information. Oh, my uh, pleasure, John. So, uh, it's about time, I guess, to wrap things up now. Um, thanks for, for answering all those questions. Um, if uh, if anyone out there has any additional questions about this program, um, there's a couple of things you can do. Gord's uh, put his email there in this slide for you to reach him. Um, you can also uh, connect with uh, a member of our recruitment team at uh, Fanshawe here, and uh, you can do that by emailing myfuture at fanshawec.ca, and that's there on the screen for you to connect with uh, one of our recruiters. Um, you can also um, book a one-on-one uh, -on -one appointment with them uh, and uh, and do a video chat at uh, fanshawec.ca slash connect. Um, so there's a couple of options there for you to get connected uh, with our staff and, and have any questions you want answered. Gord, uh, I just want to uh, thank you again for doing this. Thanks for your time. Um, thanks for talking to, uh, to us about your program today. And uh, everyone out there, uh, enjoy the rest of a uh, virtual open house. Thanks for being here. And thanks very much, Gord.
Thank you very much, John. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.